that we should give uh, the lady from Lausanne. <laughs> Right, thank you very much. So it's really my great pleasure to present my recent PhD work, uh, which is conducted at uh, EPFL here in Switzerland in the laboratory of Heinrich Hoffmann. So our recent work mainly focused on the coating of iron oxide nanoparticles, especially on small and biocompatible uh, coatings. Uh, so you may know that iron oxide nanoparticles are very interesting for medical application, uh, not only because they have quite low toxicity as compared to other magnetic materials such as cobalt, manganese, or others, but also because they have very interesting magnetic properties when you change their size, uh, their shape, etc. So what we are really interested in is to use them as contrast agents for MRI to detect tumors, but also to treat these tumors by hypothermia. So under certain conditions, you are able to heat the tumor cells and you are able to destroy these cells. Now, more precisely, we are targeting metastat metastatic lymph nodes because there is still no reliable detection method to detect these small metastases, especially in an early stage where they are still one to two millimeters in size or even smaller. So why do we need a coating? Um, you, may, you can see here that the isoelectric point of these naked nanoparticles is situated directly in the, in the physiological pH. So at that, in, in the biological medium, these nanoparticles agglomerate. So by adding a coating, you will shift this isoelectric point towards acidic or basic pH. So you will stabilize the nanoparticles. And in addition, the coating will provide active groups for further coupling with targeting molecules, drugs, or other ligands. Most of the people use rather large uh, molecules for coating, for example, uh, polymers or, or sugars, especially dextrans, but it has recently been shown that polymer-coated nanoparticles are preferentially taken up by uh, macrophages. And in our case, if we want to target lymph node metastasis, uh, to target really the metastasis, we would avoid, we want to avoid to tar to, to to, for our nanoparticles to be taken up by macrophages because we'll have less nanoparticles in the site of delivery. So what we uh, decided to do is to use rather small coating molecules which have a charge in order to, able, to enable the electrostatic stabilization. And I mentioned here three reasons why we want to use small coatings. First of all, because it was shown that nanoparticles smaller than 100 nanometer are preferentially taken up by the lymphatics and are retained there. In addition, for hypothermia, uh, we would be, if the nanoparticles are small enough, we would be able to pack much more nanoparticles in these very small metastases, and we, will, we would reach higher heating, and uh, the heat dissipation would be much higher if you have a small coating. And regarding the MRI, uh, if you have a small coating, your water molecules would have um, an easier access towards the iron oxide nanoparticles. So you would have higher proton relaxivity and higher uh, MRI signal. So we were uh, trying to look at which coating molecules would fit for our application. And we looked for that at the requirements, especially the requirements coming from the, med the medical regulatory bodies. Uh, so we chose biocompatible um, coating molecules, uh, especially some molecules are naturally present in the body. Uh, we developed the coating processing, everything in water, trying to be simple, as simple as possible, uh, that, could, that it could be scaled up uh, later. And we had some requirements for the application. Uh, if we want to target these lymph node metastases, as I mentioned before, we need uh, the, the, the coating molecule to be as small as possible, um, and we need specific chemical groups. Uh, two types of chemical groups are needed. First of all, a group which shows high affinity towards the iron oxide, and it's really well known that the carboxylic and the phosphate groups have high affinity towards uh, the iron oxide. And the idea here was if we inject that in the body to avoid the replacement of the coating with some other molecules which could have higher affinity towards the iron oxide. 
But we also need another chemical group for the further coupling with the targeting molecule. And optimally, we would like a negative surface charge because this was shown, these negative nanoparticles were shown to be taken up more easily in, in lymphatics. So we came up with 11 different coating molecules uh, which fulfilled all these requirements. Um, due to lack of time, I will just focus on one of them, which is the folic acid, and I would like to show a little bit what we obtained with these nanoparticles. So as I mentioned, the size is for us very important. Uh, you can see that the naked nanoparticles are in the range, have a size distribution around 20 nanometer. Um, and when you add the folic acid coating, you are around 80. Um, so we are still uh, below the 100 nanometers, which seem to be good for lymphatic access and retention. We still have to keep in mind that we still have to add a targeting molecule, so we'll see where we are regarding the size. Um, if you look at the arrangement of the coating molecules around the iron oxide nanoparticles, you can see that they lay in two to three layers uh, around the nanoparticles. Uh, the surface properties are also very important for us. We found a negative surface charge. As I mentioned before, it seems to be uh, good to have a negative charge for lymphatic retention. And we did some X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy to look at which elements we have. And you can see that we partially covered uh, between the naked and the folic acid coated nanoparticles, we covered some of the iron. So it's possible that we have, so the D6PS is looking at the at two nanometer uh, width around the nanoparticles. So it's possible that we have somehow one nanometer of coating and then one nanometer is, is already the, the, the surface of the particle. And we have these nitrogen groups coming from the folic acid which will allow us to do the further coupling with the targeting molecule. The toxicity uh, was, uh, was uh, established on LN cap cells, which are lymph node metastasis cells. And you can see that both for naked and folic acid coated nanoparticles, we have quite low toxicity. And even when we add the coating, we, have, uh, we improve a little bit the viability of the cells. And very interestingly, we found um, the, these folic acid coated nanoparticles after 24 hours inside the cells in the vesicles. And if you look after one hour, you can see here uh, the, the cell membrane, which is somehow engulfing and taking up these nanoparticles. Um, I have to mention here that some people say that positive uh, charged nanoparticles are preferentially taken up by, by, by cells. This was shown by my collaborators, but also by other groups. Here we have a negative charge, uh, and you may know that tumor cells overexpress the folate receptor, so it's possible that in that case we have uh, uptake of the nanoparticles, uh, which is receptor mediated. So as a conclusion, we, we developed really a coating strategy which fulfills all the requirements for the medical regulatory bodies. Uh, and we think that these folic acid coated nanoparticles are really promising to target lymph node metastasis. Not only because they have a negative surface charge, but also because they have a size below 100 nanometer. Uh, we have these nitrogen groups, uh, which allows us to do the further coupling. We show low toxicity, and uh, it seems to be taken up by these lymph node metastasis cells. So I would like, finally, to thank all the people which contributed to this work, uh, as well as the funding which supported the work, uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention. So thank you very much. I think we have time for one urgent question before the coffee. Please. <coughs> Use the microphone, please, uh, just. Uh, if I uh, got it well, uh, you had an increase in the size of your particles when you put the folic acid on, on the surface. Yes. Uh, this was a, a rather huge increase in size. Ca can you explain why the, uh, this increase was observed? So um, maybe I can come back to that. So I, I, uh, I showed, okay, I cannot. Um, so the 19 nanoparticles were around 20 nanometer. And then when you add the coating, you go to roughly 80 nanometer. So this is already, what I showed there was the hydrodynamic size, which is uh, the, not the crystallite size, uh, but it's really the size which uh, takes into account the water molecules around. 
So, and in addition, it's possible that uh, you measure, in fact, two to three particles together. Um, um, it's, it's possible that the coating is somehow bridging these nanoparticles together, and then you get this, this size. Could you repeat, please, your... Ten image. Ah, the time image, yes, yes, sure. So here you have the, um, uh, the naked nanoparticles, and here you have the nanoparticles with the coating. So thank you very much. I think thank we you. have to take our coffee. <laughs> and I thank all the speakers and the audience for the discussion, and I close the session. Thank you very much. <laughs>